Greetings guys and welcome back to Lisa Loves and my what I watched last week. Now there's quite a few last week, um, quite a few I was pleasantly surprised with so let's just crack straight on with it without further ado. Let me start the old letterboxed screen recorder so you can see what I've watched. So last week I think we left with Little Fish which um, I really enjoyed. So the first movie I watched last week was The Swimsuit Issue. Now this is a Swedish film, as far as I remember, about a middle-aged male synchronised swimming team that want to go to the Olympics to represent Sweden in a synchronised swimming event. <clears throat> it's not the done thing, it's usually young girls, um, but it used to be like right back at the beginning of the Olympics, synchronised teams were men, it wasn't a thing done by women, and they want to get back to this. The only way I can describe this is it's very full Monty-esque, um, obviously it's Swedish, but it's got that very similar feel to it. It's just a nice, easy watch. I enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most groundbreaking thing you're ever going to watch, but it's a nice, relaxing, easy little watch if you want to watch something different. I gave that a three out of five. The same evening, oh Jesus, I could be here all day talking about this. I considered doing a rant video about this. <clears throat> My review's there on the screen, you can maybe see it. This movie, right, I will refer to um, the review done by Jen's Reviews from the Grave and what her son Christian said about this movie, which I was totally on board with. This movie was trying so hard to hammer a point home that it forgot about being a good movie. Some people have really enjoyed this one. This is a movie about a woman that wakes up every night and there is an intruder in her house that's trying to kill her. Everyone in her life, her husband, um, police, everybody is really nonchalant about it. They're like, oh right, well yeah, that happens every night, you know, it's not, and you're sitting thinking, what, what's going on here? And it happens every night and even though she like really badly injures him, he'll appear the next night with no injuries. Sort of, I never knew anything about the movie or what it was about. Halfway through I clocked what it was about. <clears throat> Now this is a movie about, this is a movie, it's, it's quite timely at the minute though, but I will get to a movie that does this extremely well. Um, the whole culture of being a woman and what a woman has to tolerate in life as being acceptable. Violence against her, which people don't really take seriously, and it's just a life of being a woman, waking up every day, blah blah blah. So this is what the movie's about. It's really badly acted. The, now one thing I will disagree with, with Christian in, and this is maybe just a personal thing, he really liked the soundtrack. It did my head in. There's a specific noise that keeps playing every time the bad guy appears and I just wanted to throw something at the television screen to shut it up. I didn't feel that anything worked here. I, I you know, so, some of the, the makeup effects when there's like blood, yeah, that was fine. But other than that, I gave this half a star out of five. My review says, an idea that stomped all over with big boots when the most graceful of touches was required to reach the audience. Infantile and clumsy in its approach, this effort will sadly leave most viewers thinking WTF rather than mull over the message. That's how I felt about it. I, I just, I don't know, I just didn't like it. I really support the message of a lot of stuff that women have to tolerate. Um, it, it's, but, no. The next evening I watched a documentary on um, Amazon Prime called H.H. H. Holmes, America's First Serial Killer. This is the one about a guy that basically builds a murder hotel. He builds somewhere to fit into all these rooms where he can take people in and kill them. Um, this is something I was well aware of. The, the synopsis says, the castle, the murder, the monster. Torture chambers, acid vats, greased chutes and gassing rooms were just some of the devices of death designed by the torture doctor. So this really goes into his past, goes into how he met up with, he had so many women on the go, how he met up with them, how he met up with other associates. There's not an awful lot of detail about the gruesomeness of what went on. We do refer to it here and there, there's little bits. What's really gross is this guy, when, obviously he was a doctor, a real doctor, when he killed people, he would debone them well like he wanted the bones he didn't want the rest and he would sell their skeletons to like universities to medical places so all these skeletons that were in there were skeletons of people that he had killed which were just barbaric 
But um, yeah, it was interesting. I would have liked, it was 64 minutes long. I could have easily watched about three hours and had a bit more detail. But I give it a two and a half. I was a bit disappointed that it didn't go into as much detail as I would have liked. But um, if you like that kind of thing, um, you could definitely do worse. The next evening I watched Body Brokers. This is one that um, Lost in the Real really wanted me to watch. Sean is an awesome channel. Go over, check Sean out. His reviews are really concise. Really let you know what you're getting in for without spoiling it. I really like his channel. It's quite a new one I've subscribed to. So um, so I recommend that, Lost in the Real. So anyway, he recommended this one. Um, this is one about... Now this, is sho this was shocking to me. This is a situation that's going on probably all over the world but this focuses on America and basically it's about the amount of money that can be made from drug addicts and there are people hired to go around and try and recruit more drug addicts to put them into a program to get sober but the amount of money that can be made because of Obamacare that sort of pays so much per person per stay per even down to per urine test um, it's shocking. Through the movie there's actually intermingled this guy giving you statistics and things that happen and um, how much money can be made on a certain situation and then you're following like this lads just go, going through the system. So it says drugs rehab profit. Yuta and his girlfriend Opal are drug addicts living on the streets in rural Ohio. After getting recruited by body bro broker Wood and offered treatment in LA Wood takes Yuta under his wing and introduces him to the treatment centre, Mogul Finn. Right, so this young lad basically is taken in by a body broker and... Well, I'll not tell you anymore. The performances are really believable. I do believe what I'm watching on screen. Um, I did really enjoy it. I give it a 3 out of 5. I didn't love it, but it was a good movie. The thing that just mostly hit me was just those statistics that I had no, absolutely no idea about. So the next day, this was one I actually watched with my son. Just something to fill an afternoon. Yesterday, um, this has got uh, Jennifer Garner, who most people like. Edgar Ramirez, who I'm not that familiar with, I have to admit. Um, this is a movie about... Um, these parents are very fun, sort of like happy, easygoing people. But they have kids and they become parents. And anyone that's a parent will know there's an awful lot of saying the word no. Um, to protect your kid because you know better but this lady's parents or this lady's kids have just had enough they think she's no fun and um, the school are even concerned about things the kids have said she's a normal good mum and I mean watching it as a mum most people will relate and like well yeah there's nothing unreasonable about any of that stuff that she's done if you hear noise my husband's back walking from having walking the dog so that's what's going on in the background um, so basically they come up with this concept or a concept is suggested to them of a yes day where they have one day a year where the parents must say yes to everything that the kids ask. Within reason, it has to be legal. It can't be something, there's little doggy feet running about, hello yeah, no doggy. Um, it can't be anything for the future, it must be something for that day and um, that's basically what it's about. It's fine, it's okay, it's easy to watch. Um, the ending is unbearably syrupy sweet. It was just embarrassing. It was awful. Um, I hate when things get really melodramatic like that and everybody learns a lesson and everybody, oh, it's just, the ending was just ridiculous. Some of the little bits in the middle were, it's the sort of thing you can watch with your kids um, that'll pass a bit of time. But if you're an adult, you will cringe multiple times throughout, I've no doubt. I give that a two out of five. The same day I watched Life in a Year, Oh, right, yeah, I did like this one. This has got um, Will Smith's son in it. Yeah, stop it. This has got Will Smith's son, Jaden, in it. <clears throat> he looks so much like his mum sometimes, and then at other times the expression is just like his dad. Oh, dear God. Dobby, trying to do a video here. Can we shush, please? Yes. No, don't, don't. So um, Jaden Smith plays a 17 year old boy from a very wealthy background. He hasn't always been wealthy. His father has was skint when he was younger, worked extremely hard to get where he is. They're now in a very lovely house. His father has got a very set idea of where he sees his son going, what university. He has planned out his entire life and has even made like a map of this is what we do here, here and here. Very sort of like overbearing father. 
Well, like any young teenager, he meets a girl. Um, and this girl is the just complete opposite to him. She's She doesn't go to school. She's very rough and ready. And the father really does not approve. But he finds out that um, this girl that he has fallen for is has got terminal cancer. That's not a spoiler. It's what the movie's about. Um, and he sets out to give her an entire lifetime of memories in one year. Hence why it's called Life in a Year. It's very heartfelt. I really liked it. It was really sad. Um, the performances were excellent. He's a really good little actor. There's rap in it that's just cringy. It's really unbearable. He writes rap songs. Are they called songs? I've no idea. Too old to know these things. Um, and it's that bit is like, oh god, no, stop. Stop with the rapping. It's embarrassing. But besides that, I enjoyed it. Three out of five. Um, the following evening I watched, this is on Netflix, this is a documentary called Operation Varsity Blues, The College Admission Scandal. So this won't be for everyone. This is basically about um, how a lot of rich people are getting their kids into universities by using what they call the side door and paying this specific guy, let me see if his name's here, Rick Singer, played by Matthew Modine. Um, there's like a back door where you pay like... I mean, tens and tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of pounds for your kid to get in. But then there's a side door where he's charging. I can't remember exactly what it was. Was it like 75,000 or something to get your kid into um, Harvard, I think is the example here. Um, and they're like um, inventing that they're, they're athletes or they're rowers or they're coxes on rowers. Things that the kids had never even done or they weren't good at. Volleyball players. He's in cahoots with the head of the sports department in these different universities and he pays them so much, the family pay him so much and their kid gets in. There's even someone hired to go and sit and do the test for the, the individual to get them a better score. It's really jaw-dropping, it's shocking, it's true. You maybe remember a few years ago, really famous actor, um, him and his wife did this to get their daughter into school. And I think she was a really well-known vlogger. And people realised, because she lived her life on camera, people realised all this stuff that was saying that she did wasn't true. I think she was supposed to be um, a rowing champion or something. But they were caught and they ended up going to court and the mother ended up going to prison. Um, but this is true, it's happening. And all these kids, that really bright kids from poor backgrounds, aren't getting places in these prestigious universities because they're full of sons and daughters of rich people that pay to get their kids in regardless of their intelligence so yeah that's interesting if you like that kind of thing on the same evening now i don't know how to feel about this one this is one that now i watch a channel called spooky astronauts um i really do um rate emma's reviews on things and her viewpoints and she recommends a lot of movies that i've never heard of um little like hidden gems like most disturbing foreign movies, things like that. Really good channel, check her out. So she had this snow town down as being a must watch for anyone that likes true crime, that doesn't mind movies that get a bit gritty, a bit, you know, a bit much for some people. So this is about an Australian crime, it's true. Um, and I think the case was called The Bodies in the Barrels. Um, and this basically covers the story of a young lad that became involved, how he became involved, the ringleader, stuff that they did leading up to that. Um, it's extremely gritty um, to the extreme in that it's it's just the whole way it's shot is very depressing and very bleak. It's, it's the whole thing is depressing and almost every character in it you don't like instantly. Um, it's a couple of bits is really brutal. There is um, a warning here on animal cruelty. There's nothing shown on screen, but the very fact that you know what really happened in real life and what these people did is, is enough for some people, I would imagine. Um, there is a scene now, I'm gonna just put this out here. It's not a spoiler of the movie, but I wanna put it out because I find it really shocking and just distasteful personally, and I didn't feel it added anything to the movie. Um, the, the ringleader in this has killed a bunch of, I think they're wallabies, like small kangaroos. And it shows him chopping, and they're obviously real wallaby, you can tell they're real, they're not props, and he's chopping them up. And he like puts its head in a bucket, and basically obliterates it by bashing it, and it's just, it's disgusting, and there's no need for it. 
Um, there is a local paedophile in the area and basically he wants to throw animal brains around this guy's house, which is why he's doing this. But it just showing them chopping up, and I think it was to show the young lad who's meant to be 16, how, you know, it sort of shocks him and takes him back what's going on. And this guy's doing it like, I suppose like he's got an fish, like it's nothing. I don't like that neither, incidentally. But um, it basically shows how this young lad grows from a normal young lad living in a really downtrodden area. Um, just comes under the influence of this really nasty piece of work and where that all eventually ends up. Like I say, it's gritty, it is depressing. I wouldn't say it's the most shocking thing I've ever seen or the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. There are bits that are quite brutal, but overall I've seen, if you're watching this thinking you're gonna see something really disturbingly brutal, it's it's not. It's just a couple of scenes um, that are hard to watch. But other than that, it was okay. I give it a three out of five. I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was, um, given as Emma recommended it as being like an extremely disturbing, I suppose it is disturbing because it happened, but um, yeah, I, I do think it's watchable by most people, apart from them bits with the wallaby, that was just gross. Right, so the next evening I watched The Mauritanian, this was excellent. I watched this because Jodie Foster is in it, Jodie Foster is one of my favourite actresses, she hasn't been in much for a long time. I think she's concentrating on being behind the lens more so, which is great for her, but it's a shame for people that love to see her acting. This is another true story. This is shocking. Um, let me get the guy's name. So the guy's name is Mohamedou Old Salahi. They've actually spelled his name wrong here. It's S-A-L-A-H-I. Um, this is a guy that was detained at Guantanamo Bay. Um, a detainee at the US military's Guant Guantanamo Bay Detention Centre is held without charges for over a decade and seeks help from a defence attorney, Jodie Foster, for his release. <clears throat> so this goes into his treatment, it goes into what they do. I did know a lot of what went on in Guantanamo Bay and it's a very mistaken assumption that most people there are guilty and a few are innocent. No, it seems to be the other way around. Um, they're probably, you know, this, this happened not long after 9-11 and, you know, people were tempers were very high, um, the desire was very high to catch people. The only thing that linked this man was that he took a phone call from a cousin and that cousin of his was working with um, Bin Laden. Was it Bin Laden? I'm sure it was Bin Laden. Um, and because he took a phone call from this guy who was in the area that Bin... It's obviously by association. He wasn't involved directly in any way, but he took this phone call and because he took the phone call, they assumed that he knew more than he did. When they came to arrest him, Stupidly, he deleted all the information on his phone because he didn't want to get his cousin into trouble. So he's detained in Guantanamo Bay for a long, long time and his treatment is just appalling. Um, Jodie Foster sort of has to work to gain his trust. There are sort of issues along the way, stumbling blocks, but what goes on in this and what the military and the government try to cover, oh, everything's redacted in every report that Jodie Foster gets, everything's blacked out, so she can't see the evidence against him because there isn't any. Um, and eventually she does actually get access to this information and it's shocking stuff. At the same time, there is a officer who is supposed to, a sergeant, can't remember, who is gonna be the one to prosecute Mohamedou um, and he, Thankfully, it, a, a ray of light is an honest man and realises upon his investigation into this that something's not quite right. Um, he is played by him that plays Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch. <coughs> so it sort of follows Jodie Foster and this guy's relationship. It follows this prosecutor trying to get to the bottom of what's happening, trying to talk to the powers that be and say, hang on a minute here. I can't, we can't prosecute this guy and haven't been told you'll, you'll do it. Um, it's disturbing stuff and the fact that this is all true. And then at the end you get all the updates like, you know, the, the text, which I love, and the real pictures, which I love. Um, highly recommend this one, four out of five. Um, it's shocking stuff. It really is what, what goes on. On last night, so this is the last two, I watched Stay Out of the Attic. Um, that is known by other names. Elsewhere, there is a prefix to the word attic. I'm sure that you know the one with the F one. So this has been recommended, this has been reviewed by an awful lot of people in the horror community. Some people were meh, 
some people thought well I quite enjoyed that and some people hated it so I thought I'm gonna give this a watch because it's, it's short it's only 80 minutes long let's give this a watch this is a movie about a group of ex-prisoners who are doing house moves they go to this quite creepy house with this old German dude and um, he is very resolute that they must clear the house in one night. They say, we can't possibly. He offers them a lot of money. Eventually they say, right, okay, we'll do an all-nighter. We'll get it all done for you. So in the process of doing this house move, the old guy has told them, don't go into the attic or the basement. Um, but they get a lot done and they think, right, let's, let's sort this out. They're going to move everything. And they come across a lot of things they really wish they hadn't. It does actually tell you in the synopsis sort of what they come across and who the guy is, which incidentally is ridiculous. I'm not going to tell you here. If you've read that little blurb, maybe you want to know yourself, but um, I sort of had an idea going in what it was about. Um, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. Um, there were a couple of bits where I rolled my eyes that were a little bit like tropey, but overall this was okay. This was a pretty solid, fun, straightforward watch. Um, the one thing that did irritate me is there's like a human stroke, I don't know, it just looked like a person. You know the people under the stairs, do you remember that movie? Kind of looks like that, like a person but like a bit feral. But he made noises that sounded like a bear or a wolf, really guttural noises that just would not come out of a human, just wouldn't happen. That was really distracting. But um, everything else about it, I I enjoyed. I have to be honest. I do think it was it's it's never gonna you know break any barriers or anything. But it was okay. Um, so as I say, a couple of little eye rolling moments that were a bit oh for goodness sake. But you could watch much worse. I was expecting it to be absolutely terrible, and it wasn't. So yeah, I give that a three out of five. And finally, this was excellent. I watched this last night. Promising Young Woman. Now, I knew nothing about this other than a channel that I love to watch, Austin Burke. He has been going on about this movie for just weeks and weeks and weeks and how much he liked it. And Carrie Mulligan, who stars in it, he's saying if she doesn't get an Oscar for this performance, there's just something wrong. So, um, the synopsis says, I knew nothing going into this. Payback never looked so promising. A young woman haunted by a tragedy in her past takes revenge on the predatory men unlucky enough to cross her path. Now let me just switch off. Actually, just let me show you before I do switch off. If I scroll down there, you can see my friends along Watched By. You can look at those scores out of five, folks, and that will give you an indication of, you know, there's no one there. I think the lowest one there is a three and a half out of five. So it tells you, it's obviously impress a lot of people right that's that switched off so something's happened in this woman's past this movie does what lucky tried to do but this does it well um it does really point out what a lot of women are up against what happens how a lot of men behave um basically she goes to a lot of different bars and she gets herself to appear to be completely and utterly wasted either on drugs completely drunk she's not but she is pretending that she is and in every case she does this several times a week and every single time in every single case a young man comes forward and offers to take her home and to help her and to you know the knight in shining armor and in every single situation this woman is taken they try to take advantage try to take advantage because this is what she's wanted them to do because she's going to teach them a lesson um, and basically make sure that it doesn't happen again um, this it sounds like pretty simplistic but there's a lot more to it than that a lot more unravels as we go through the story the ending isn't at all what I expected um, it was very shocking how it ended but it worked the soundtrack and the music chosen for this movie was just sublime was just perfect when the credits are rolling even though you're a bit taken back by how it ended just the the final scenes you were like yes that's just fantastic that's that's just brilliant um i have nothing really bad to say about this movie it is excellent it does put forward what it needs to succinctly perfectly it does put across really properly what a lot of women have to tolerate when they that you can't go out on your own and get into a drunken state 
it doesn't just, it's not one of these man-hating things, it does show <clears throat> deans of universities, female friends, female, all playing down things that happen. Well, if you hadn't got into that state, well, if this, you know, this wouldn't happen, you have to have more. It's all about the woman having to be careful and she's at fault, or she's drunk, or, but you sleep around, you've got a reputation, so what do you expect? Blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of pointing a finger at society's just wish to brush things under the carpet that it really shouldn't. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would thoroughly recommend it. I thought it was excellent. Um, that one, what she should win awards for the performance is just stunning, just outstanding. So yeah, that is what I've watched this week. Um, I doubt I will watch so many good movies next week. There was quite a few in there that I was really impressed by. This is much longer than usual. I do apologize, but there were a lot of movies to go through. Um, so thank you if you've watched this far and um, drop any recommendations below you would like me to check out and I shall catch up with you guys next week. Over a night from Lisa Loves.